Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. And in this one, we're gonna be doing a quick unboxing and first look of the 2020 iPad Pro I've got right here. And also comparing it with the late 2018 iPad Pro and see how this stacks up with this. The box is a very traditional iPad box that we have come to find in basically every generation. And inside the box, we get the iPad, which I'll put aside for now. We have the manual information. Uh, with some white stickers, a quick start guide, and then you have your cables. We have a 15 watt charger brick that has USB-C, and it's a USB-C to USB-C because the iPad is also USB-C. So let me take this out, put the rest back in, and move to the iPad. Up until now, I've been using the 12.9 inch, so this seems significantly smaller, thinner, or lighter, I should say, than what I had before. So, there you go. That's that's what the new iPad looks like. And let me actually take this out so that we can do a quick comparison. Side by side, you can see that the iPads are virtually identical from the 2018 version to the 2020 version. The thickness, the design language, the connection points are almost basically the same. The only major difference is the camera on the outside. And in the new one, we have a double camera with a LiDAR detector. And the old one, of course, we have just a regular uh, single lens camera. The new iPad has a, I think it's a 12 megapixel uh, wide lens. That's 12 megapixels with a aperture of f1.8 and a ultra wide lens uh, with a megapixel of 10 and a aperture of f2.4. To the left of that, um, or my left, your right, uh, of that is a LiDAR detector prominently displayed or prominently featured uh, in, these, in this iPad Pro. All right, I'm gonna power this thing on and then we'll take a quick look, quick setup, I'll come back when everything's all ready to go. Now the front of the iPad, as you can see between the two are virtually identical as well. The front facing camera, the same. The design of the front, the same. The bezels, the buttons, power button, all the same. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because uh, when they redesigned the iPad Pro, they pretty much got it right. Um, and it's exactly what you would expect uh, in, in what you want in a product such as the iPad. So the major only difference between the 2020 iPad and the 2018 iPad is the rear facing camera on the back. Similarly, under the hood, we've only got incremental updates as well. The 2018 iPad has a A12X Bionic processor while the 2020 has an A12Z. Now being A12, it suggests that the processors are more similar than they are different compared to the A13 uh, Bionic processor in the iPhone 11 Pros. If we pull up Geekbench and take a look at the processor, we can see that the 2018 iPad has an A12X Bionic clocked at 2.49 gigahertz. We know that the 2018 iPad has a seven core CPU, while the 2020 processor has a eight core CPU, but the frequency is identical, meaning most likely Apple um, took the A12X processors and cut down the CPU from eight cores to seven cores to get the yields up higher. And um, you know, that's how they did the binning and then they pushed out the A12X. Now, the quality of the chips have been better. Now they're pushing out all eight cores on this processor. So uh, we have one more core up to eight, but basically same architecture, same, pro same frequency, same everything. Now, we take a look at the memory, we can see that this has 5.56 gigabytes of memory on the brand new one. It's kind of a random number, but it is what it is. While the 2018 has 3.66 gigabytes of memory. Now granted, iOS, iPads, iPhones never really had a huge memory limitation. I've, I've, you really never run into uh, the memory issues like how you do on Android phones, and of course Android phones have a lot more memory. But uh, it's nice to see that we are getting uh, over two gigabytes more of memory 
um, and that's a substantial increase in memory compared to the old iPad. Now, if we look at the processor power or processor performance from Geekbench, we can see that the results from the single core and a multi-core score were basically in the same ballpark as, as I said before. Single core score, score is uh, within margin of error, 1116 on the old one, 1124 on the new one, and the multi-core score is actually slower on the 2020. Uh, 4292 uh, versus 4695. Now, I have a suspicion that this is probably because the smaller iPad has less cooling capability or throttles a little bit sooner. Maybe it's because it's eight cores and it heats up a little faster, so it has a throttle a little bit more. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, it looks like at seven cores, the multi-score on the older 2018 iPad is just just a little bit better. Uh, we're not talking about you know huge. We're only talking about 500 points um, and maybe 10% or less. But really, it's not that big of a performance difference. What else can we see from the specs? Now, if we go into single core uh, information under Geekbench, we can see that uh, the single core of 1124 score of the 2020 iPad is about 200 points behind the iPad or iPhone 11 Pro Max, which scores 1330 thereabouts. Uh, and it falls in line with the other A12X Bionic processor. So as we said, as I said before, the A12X or and A12Z is just a little bit behind the A13. And it's basically a rebadge, rehash of the 2018 iPad processor. Again, well, the major difference between the 2018 and the 2020 iPad is the capability of the LiDAR detector, uh, which kind of shows itself in VR apps or, for example, the Measure app. If I fire that up and I take a look at uh, the measuring capability of this, if I were to draw a line from here to here, I can launch the um, the measure app and it, you can see it's much more stable it tracks a lot better and it knows what's far and what's close distance and it, it does it really well notice i don't have to do a lot of scanning right as i start the app now if i were to do the same thing on the old ipad and it's 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 struggling it, it doesn't know uh it with if this is in the foreground or this is in the background. You can see here, I'm, I'm trying to focus on the wall. It says find a nearby surface to measure. It just, it just can't handle it. So uh, clearly we have a very big difference in performance. Um, you know, like, again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to focus on this point here and then focus on the back and it just can't do it. The new iPad, I could easily launch it, draw a line and Take a look at this. I can draw a front point here to the wall. And this right here is able to capture that it's actually something in the foreground and something in the background. And, and this is something that it actually is, is pretty awesome because um, this is pretty incredible. It knows that it's six feet from here to the wall. And it, it just holds holds all the points exactly without moving it. It doesn't jitter, it doesn't, it doesn't drift. This thing is actually absolutely amazing. So let's talk about conclusions. Is it worth buying the 2020 iPad? Well, if you have a 2018 iPad, either uh, iPad Pro, either 11 inch or 12.9 inch, and you're happy with how it performs, um, you know, every, it does everything you need it to do, you don't necessarily need this 2020 iPad because the processor is virtually identical, uh, give or take one core, but that performance is basically the same. In fact, the, the 12.9 inch iPad seems to perform better than the 11 inch iPad on multitasking. Uh, so it's a wash. Um, the only major difference is the camera on the back and the LiDAR feature. And of course, if you use your iPad to take photos, you really shouldn't do that, but but if you were, if you do, you get the ultra wide and the wide camera view and the LiDAR, but um, Apple is really pushing the VR capabilities of the iPad. 
And that's very exciting, but if you don't actually use VR or you don't use the measure or you don't use um, you know, those shopping, you get to scan your whole house and then you know, place your chairs or sofas in the house, you don't, if you're not interested in that, then really the 2020 iPad isn't much of an upgrade for you at all because the 2018 iPad can basically do all those things, everything that this can do. Um, except for the LiDAR feature. So what I think is most interesting is the next generation of iPhones, uh, perhaps we'll be getting that LiDAR capability in our iPhones and being able to measure things, being able to see VR very, very stable. I think that is gonna be absolutely amazing. So 2020, maybe we'll be getting one of these LiDARs in these phones. So my final recommendation is if you already have this, don't bother with this unless you want the features. If you're looking to buy a brand new iPad, I would take a look at the, if, see if you can get your hands on a 2018 iPad and perhaps get it on sale or some kind of discount. Uh, if you can't get any discount, well, you know, this thing's amazing. This thing's great. This thing is uh, exactly what you, you know, everything that you would possibly want in an iPad. So yeah, if I find any deals on the 2018 iPad, I'll make sure to link it in the description down below so you can check that, that out. If this video helps you in the purchasing decision, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps consider subscribing for future tech videos. I'll see you in the next one.